Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Zach and I'm a travel, landscape and adventure photographer from Sydney, Australia based in Bali, Indonesia. Today I wanted to cover an interesting topic and that is how to edit those blue moody tones just like this. Today we're going to be taking this photo and turning it into this. In the past few months I've really seen this blue moody edit really take over Instagram and it's even crept into my own work. That's why today I wanted to show you guys exactly how I achieved this look and no, it's not by just sliding down that temperature slider, as I'll show you that really doesn't work. So we're going to be covering the base edit and a few little tips and tricks on how I achieve this look. So guys, let's dive into my laptop and let's get started with this edit. Okay, so as you can see, this is our shot and before is this, after is this and I have created a little virtual copy that is completely blank and just before we dive in, no, you can't just slide the temperature slider down. As you can see, that really doesn't suit the vibe. But anyway, as you can see, this image is very warm. It has a whole lot of like yellows, oranges and even a slight tint of red in there, making it just a little bit harder to edit these blue moody tones on, but that's okay because these photos usually turn out the best. So we're gonna start off this edit by just simply dropping the temperature a little bit Bit, not a whole bunch and as you can see it's kind of turned the image just a little bit purple so we're gonna balance that out like that like so okay that's looking good so now that's out of the way we're just gonna do some basic corrections and that's just playing around with the exposure playing around with the highlights and the shadows maybe the highlights up just a little bit the shadows make them creep out a little bit more and the blacks up the whites just a touch and that's looking fairly good. Recently, I have been loving taking away the clarity of an image. I'm not sure it just gives it like a nice kind of overall vibe. It just makes it just that little bit more dreamy. So we're gonna dial back the, uh, the clarity and maybe just the texture a little bit there and things are looking fairly good. We're also just gonna drop the saturation a little bit overall on the image, nothing too crazy. Then the fun part, we're gonna dive into the tone curve. Just a simple S curve for this, I think is gonna be more than enough. We don't wanna do anything too crazy and not that this image really needs it. It was shot just after golden hour. I can remember this is in Monument Valley in Utah and basically the sun had come up and I was driving through, I saw this straight down the middle of the road. Obviously I had to stop and shoot it. So it doesn't have the best light on it, but nonetheless, it's not the worst. Let me bring this up just a little bit more. So you might be thinking, Zach, this isn't looking blue at all, but that's okay. We have just done the basic corrections, kind of getting it from that raw image to a little bit more of a contrasty and punchier vibe. And really to me, that is the first two panels. That's all they kind of achieve. In the HSL, in the color grading, and the masks, and the camera calibration, that is where the real magic happens. So, we are going to, first of all, take away a whole bunch of these yellows and oranges. So we don't want them too punchy. And even these reds seem, okay. That's controlling really that middle stack there. And you can see there's even red on the road here, which is a little bit strange, but we're gonna basically take all these reds away, but we still wanna keep that little orange punch. You know, we're still in the desert, we're still in the middle of America, so we don't wanna lose that completely. And these are uh, these yellow areas on the side here, they, they don't look too good at all. I'm gonna drop the aquas a little bit and see what happens when we play around with the blues. Maybe drop these a little bit, believe it or not. I know we're going for a, quite a blue image, but sometimes the overall blue saturation can be a little bit a little bit too rich, especially in the sky. So I find myself dropping those. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of magenta in the shadows over here. So we're just gonna kill all of that out to make it nice and neutral. So now that we've done that, I'd like to come back up to the hue section. And this is kind of where we play around with the actual colors of things. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of orange in this image. We control that quite a lot. Not a great deal of yellow, even though it looks like there is. And we're just gonna tweak these blues slightly, purple all the way down, and we don't have any magenta in this shot. So it's still looking pretty warm at the moment, even though we've just made those corrections, but I promise you we'll be getting there soon. You'll be seeing a huge change, especially in the color grading panel. So this is where we are going to add blues into the shadows, and we don't want it to be too tealy. If we just increase the saturation, as you can see, too tealy kind of gives it that green look and, and that's really not what we're going for here. So you want something in between that teal and that purple. And we really don't want to go too crazy on, on the saturation here, otherwise it just kind of gets out of control. So we're going to dial that back, but we do want blues in the shadows. And we also are going to pick some blues for the highlights as well. That's actually quite nice, just there. And then these mid-tones, I think we actually might go 
orange. We could go blue. Well, we could go blue if we wanted to, but I, no, that just kind of takes away from that rock in the middle. So let's go with orange and let's just dial this back quite a lot. We don't want it to be anything too crazy. And that's kind of, uh, that's kind of those panels here. I then usually go into the sharpening and the noise reduction, all that kind of stuff, but that is for another video. We're just gonna come down to camera calibration here and play around with these just a little bit to get an idea of, um, of what we're working with. Tweak the colors just to make sure we're getting exactly what we're after. No major changes here at all. Once again, I could go in depth about how the camera calibration sliders work, but that is a video for another day, okay. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so we're sitting here and it's still not looking very moody, very blue at all, but that is where the masks come in. Now my editing workflow is nearly, I would say between 60 to 70% with just masks. The mask tool for me is the most useful, it's the most used, it's, it's the best thing. And it's a huge reason why I don't use Lightroom on my iPad or my phone, because the control you have over the masks on Lightroom CC or whatever they're calling it now, the classic version, the, the Lightroom that looks like this, that is where it's at for me. It is just perfect. So we're gonna come down to here and first thing we're gonna do is add a gradial filter and we're just gonna drop the, the overall temperature there. And that has nearly cleaned up everything in here. We're also gonna drop the saturation just a little bit and increase the contrast. Then we're gonna have to drop the saturation a little bit more. And then we might drop this just a little bit more as well. And instantly that has just given us a really big blue punch into the shadows, which has cleaned this image up like crazy. If we delete this mask, you can see the change is huge. So that is probably the biggest effect we're gonna have just here. It changes the whole image and you can see why I use this all the time. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to select the sky. And once upon a time, you did have to mask this out, use a color range, use a luminance range, God forbid, use the brush and go over all the contrasting areas. Now you can just hit select sky, thank God and it takes care of it for you. So we're gonna increase the exposure just a little bit and we're going to desaturate this quite a lot as well. Maybe, maybe add a little bit of warmth into the sky. No, no not too keen, okay. And what are we thinking? I think if we leave the exposure like that, maybe drop the dehaze, drop the clarity a little bit, make sure there's no texture in there at all. I mean, cool this down a little bit. Maybe just increase the exposure there just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. And as you can see, it kind of just flattens out that sky. As you could see before, there was a weird kind of like green to yellow gradient around the bottom of it. But now that is completely gone and we are basically good to go. I want to see, yeah. Yeah, we don't want it too crazy. We don't want it all the way down, but just enough like that. And now the image is looking pretty damn good in my opinion. I'm gonna just add a few more masks to kind of draw the viewer in. This is what I do on nearly all of my images. But I'm gonna come down to the bottom here, especially because this was taken at quite a low angle. So as you can see, the, uh, the bottom of this image is quite blurred out. So that's just the natural bokeh. And then as you can see, this is all nice and sharp. So there's quite a lot of like compression, but there's also a bit of depth in the shot as well. So we're gonna emphasize that by coming over here, another filter and just dropping the overall exposure. And that kind of just gives it a more, a more deep look. It makes it look kind of further away, more spread out. Um, and also it kind of takes away from looking at the bottom of the image and just looking dead center down the middle of the road to this rock stack formation. I'm really not sure what they call that. And the last filter I like to add is a nice radial filter. I make sure everything that I want the viewer to be looking at is in this inside circle. And you can change that by using the feather, but I just leave that at 50 and then I invert it. So now we're just selecting the outside and I will drop the exposure once again. Nothing too crazy. You don't wanna create this weird vignette look unless that's what you're going for. So I try and kind of keep an eye on the sky to see where it starts to get dark and really noticeable. And I would say something like that is kind of where it's at. And if we delete this, you can see it's just, it's just not the same. It's a little bit more rich on the outside, points you down, down the middle. So I'd say we're basically good to go here. If I have a look at the before and after of the other one that I can look at, this one might be a little bit more flat, but as you can see, that is where we started. This is where we're at. If anything, we might increase the blacks here just a little bit 
raise them up. We get that little bit of fade, especially in the bottom down here. I kind of just fade that out, which is which is actually quite nice. I do I do like how that looks. Um, and then if anything, we might also just bring the overall saturation down. And I would say this is pretty much good to go. It's uh, it's looking quite nice. And, and like I said, the majority of the work really is done in the HSL color tab, the color grading tab, and in the masks. As you saw, this, uh, this mask straight away just changed the image completely from that to that. And that is really where we saw the biggest improvement. Now, not all images are gonna need a big mask to kind of change everything. Uh, a lot of the times you can do it in the color grading by just adding blues into the mid-tones and into the shadows. And I find nine times out of 10, that gets me out of trouble. But for an image like this, which was really warm to begin with, that's kind of what we needed to do. But nonetheless, guys, that is basically gonna wrap up today's video. If you have enjoyed, if you've learned something, let me know down below. If you're new around here, subscribe. I appreciate all the support I've been getting recently. I absolutely love you guys. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.